what is up guys the hill twins are here back at it again with another video and this time we're actually showcasing the vegeta set 11 leader now on his front side if you don't know what he does he swings and draw a card and then when he deals damage to your opponent's life due to this card's at attack uh, he can look at the top card of the deck and if it's a blue card mono blue you can place it in the energy area and rest mode. So, off rip, he's a leader that's highly anticipated. A lot of people have been working on it. And as you know, the Hill Twins are working on it too. So, I'm showcasing one of the primary builds that I have been working on thus far. Uh, against a very, very good friend of mine. And someone who's proven to be uh, uh, developing into a life ally, uh, Sean Bartley. Um, he has been training and getting so much better at this game to the point where he's able to compete um, very nicely. So that's the one. Um, and also, he does actually have a podcast. Um, so I will drop the link at the end of the video or in the subscription or in the um, the comment box or what have you uh, description. But um, without further ado, let's get on to the match. So for one, before we even start, you want to know how to approach matchups based on what you can anticipate. So I'm sitting across from Gotenks. I know that Gotenks is a self-awakened leader. He draws a lot of cards. It's going to be no issue for him to defend my leader's attacks because of the fact that he does not want me to ramp. And on the hindsight, Sean already knows this. Sean's saying, hey, you know what? I know that I, I would like to play a certain way, but Vegeta's going to force me to play a certain way, and I have to be prepared to deal with that. But you have to gauge it. So I go ahead and drop Pan... Pan's a great card in the deck, but I want to try to get damage off of my opponent via my effects. So that's that. He goes ahead and charges his Final Flash. Now, Final Flash is a very strong card, but blue is not necessarily going to need... He's not going to need that against blue decks because of the fact that blue actually does have a lot of non-status attackers. You know, non-crit, non-double strikes, etc. So I go, I charge a Trunks, which is not a very good charge, guys. Resource management is pivot to its king in the Dragon Ball Super card game. I'll get into that a little bit later. But um, I swing and I combo the Raging Spirit Sun Gohan. And I'm a 20k. It's very difficult to, for him to defend without going next, so he forced to take it. Gohan is a very strong card in testing. Um, and it feels very good to use on the offense as well as defense. And it's a better option to use than using your... Uh, Goku's UI Kamehameha because of the fact that that card is a really really strong offensive and defensive card I don't want to waste a card like that on trying to get you know damage in very early It's just not profitable for me. It's not something that's gonna really work throughout the entire game um, I mean early game, you know what I'm saying he goes ahead and drops the go tanks um, the, the Gogeta unison now this was his best turn to play and this is what I mean about actually thinking about your opponents match, thinking about the match and choosing the best options. You can see he had an 8th in his hand. He could have easily 8th, but 8th would have done nothing to the scenario that he's in but tap him out and make him more vulnerable as a leader. Whereas Gogeta was actually able to give him a pseudo 5k. So now he's basically Sinzu Bean, which helps better defend him against my leader attacks. As well as give, act, giving him access to his Vegeta counterplay. On that swing, he swings at my leader. I could have taken the damage because I'm not a self-awakened leader, but I wanted to get the free Han on board because I want to pressure his unison. His unison is going to be negative debt throughout this game for me, especially trying to trigger my effect. So having the extra body on board really, really is the route that I want to go. And now I get to attack, not allow him a combo stat, which is really pivotal because I don't want to see Zamasu. And then I get to drop my unison and finish off the job. Now, this unison that I drop, if you don't know what he is, he's the baby unison from set 11. And essentially what he does is he has his 15K, he has a plus two where he just draws one card. He has a minus four where he can basically give your leader 15K and double strike for the turn. And up until your next turn, you can use counter cards, mono blue counter cards in your hand by discarding two cards from your hand. So he's a very strong card. Um, I mean, he's just a great card. Um, boom. So that's that. I go ahead, I pay four energy, and then I go up to six. So the reason why I paid the four energy because I'm not in any threat 
to, for him to deal damage. I know that I'm going to be able to kill this unison. And next turn, he's going to try and drop some cards on me. I want to make sure that I don't have to think about protecting my unison or even think about negating. If the extra energy is there and I don't have the negate, pay the extra energy, go up to six. It's very profitable for me to do that. I swing with leader, draw, and I come with the ape. He has to. Sean knows that this is neg, but he knows the rules of engagement. He says, yo, I cannot allow him to go up to six energy next turn. That's going to blow me out of the water, and it's just going to put me in a state of the game that is going to be too far to come back. Because while Sean is going to be tapping out for his plays, blue's not really tapping out. Okay? Now, yellow is honestly one of the... Yellow is one of the leaders that, one of the decks that you got to be careful and understand the rules of engagement against as well because of the fact that yellow is really going to force you to sequence your, your, your plays very, very optimally. And if you do not sequence them correctly, you are going to have to pay a price, okay? In the form of Zamasu, in the form of Bergamo, it's just going to be very, very, you know, it's going to be very, very problematic. Um, so he goes ahead and swing at this point. And he needs to get a battle card on board. I have, you know, three pieces on my board. He needs to catch up. He's going to go ahead and ape me. That is the perfect play. I go down to one. I do believe he should have attacked into my battle card, though, because it would have cost him nothing. And if he can't kill my unison, it's, it's kind of for naught attacking into the unison the way he, 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 he is. Because he's not going to be able to get rid of the unison. So I think that the better option, especially on his awakened turn, was to deal with the uh, Gohans because they pressure the unisons. They will pressure his awakened leader. He's at for life. Now, this is another thing about resource management. I said I was going to get back to that again. I have uh, I have a, a trunks in my I have a trunks god sealing technique inside my energy area. So I could not trunks god sealing this attack on. Uh, I mean this card because of the fact that he's going to awaken and I cannot deal with go tanks. Um, so obviously allowing eight to rock was perfectly fine. He's not going to really put me in a detrimental game state and he drops the basil. I'm going to go ahead and trunks God selling that because now I know that when he awakens, he's going to have to drop basil again. He's not going to be able to put and play go tanks. Go tanks is not a threat this matchup. So um, at this turn, so it's profitable now for me to, Use my Trunks Godzilla, make him waste an energy, which shuts off another Bardock Ape on the attack next turn. You know, I made him waste an energy for that. And I know he has to have Bezu out. And Bezu is such a very, very good card in this matchup and in just any matchup, you know. So he goes ahead and attacks the Gohan. He knows, hey, his boy can probably get out of control. He's going to be at 5 energy next turn. I'm going to have to do something about that. And then he goes ahead and he's going to swing at my Unison this time. And he is going to put my unison at a livable amount. And when I say livable amount is, you know, I'm not too far gone to the point where, you know, if he had to make a strenuous play to get rid of my unison, he couldn't definitely do that because it's not that bad. Once your unison gets six to eight and ten coins, you're just going to have free value throughout the rest of the game. I do think, however, that that base will probably should have went after my Gohan as well, just so that, you know, even though I still have my Unison, I did lose my board and we're kind of even, especially with me having a lot more energy over him. So I'm sitting here and I want to attack, but again, I have to understand the rules of engagement against Yellow. And I wanted to be greedy, but I chose not to when I swung with the leader. At this point, Freehan is just a vanilla 15k attacker. I don't care if he activates a monster super combo. I don't care if he activates Bezu. I'm still going to be in a very good spot. And I'm just testing the waters. If he doesn't have it, then I go ahead and swing. And this is about sequencing again, guys. This is so important because I'm going to attack with my leader on my battle card because I know he can't do anything to my unison. And I'm going to attack with my cards on board before I drop a card because I want to make sure that I'm not allowing him, giving him space to create a counter play where I'm in a bad position. So I go ahead and drop the Android 18. She's a phenomenal card for, for Blue, and I think she's going to get much more popular as the sets continue. She's a 20 drop 3K draw to, um, 20 drop 3 energy draw to card. She's a pseudo ape. She just feels very good getting a nice beta on board and having the effect of an ape for an additional energy. Uh, just awesome. So drop her swing at the leader. 
I believe I swing at the... No, I'm swinging at the 8. I don't want escape on board. I don't want to deal with too many battle cards. My unison is at 4, which means that two basal attacks and one Bergamo attack can kill that. And then he can go ahead and go into his go tanks and just kind of start trying to take that game back. At least take a little bit more control. And I don't want that position. So I swing, I super combo. That puts me at a good point. And then I drop my... Um, Goku hit and Goku hit is gonna try and deal with the basil. So at this point, he has to protect Bardock because he just doesn't want to play this tug of war where he just has no rope. So he has to protect Bardock, and likely we're gonna see the Zamasu super combo. I believe he does. Um, and what that's going to do is take away one of my attacks from my Goku and hit, and essentially defend his Bardock. But he will have to place another 5K if he decides to defend on this one. Which is going to be good because now I make him waste two cards versus one. And I didn't go so high so that he can final flash me um, safely for free. You know, final flash would have put, you know, had I went to 35, he could final flash. And um, that would take out the uh, blocker effect anyway. You know, he, he, he would take away my effect, which means I would not have access to my dual attack on the, uh, uh, well, not dual attack, but to restand my Goku and hit. And he would be able to guard perfectly. So I wanted to avoid giving him a perfect defense if he had the final flash. And he, this way you will have to waste two cards. Um, and let's get those super combos out. But Sean knows that he has to do that. He has to keep this ape on board. Because he needs to make sure that he is maintaining his livability throughout the game. And he plays Poutine. Now Poutine would have been very, very effective literally before I dropped Goku and hit. And that's the reason why I had to sequence the effects the way I did. I had to sequence the attacks because had he had been able to use that super combo and generate Putin, I would have lost a lot of value off of my Goku and hit just off of Rip and as well as another attacker. So I swing with the baby and I combo the 5k ape. It's free. I have to give it a uh, Basil. Between Basil and Bergamo, Basil is a very strong card in this matchup. But I know Sean. Sean really really understands the power that lies in Basil, being able to spread your attacks. And on a set of scales between Basil and uh, Bardock, Basil is probably the better card in this scenario because of the fact that Basil is going to give Sean multiple battle steps. I know yellow. I know the rules of engagement. I know that I want to avoid as many battle steps as possible when dealing with yellow. So that's the main reason why I had to go for that. Sean had to take such a... Defensive play on his ape that he needed to um, that he needed to he needed to he, he he couldn't defend. So I'm here. I go swing, but I recant that, and we're good friends. So that's okay. I'm thinking. I'm like, you know what? I don't want to swing. I want to end my turn. If I swing, I'm going to leave him in rest mode, which is not good. He's going to have access to attacking with his Bardock into my Unison, which is also not good because of the fact that I don't want to activate Dimension Magic very early. I want to allow, allow him to use his energy first. I want information. I want to see what he's going to do before I give him an additional card. Also, giving him an additional card may change his route, which may be very detrimental for me. So by leaving this card open, essentially what I'm able to do is defend twice effectively and if I need to throw a bean on him that's perfectly fine because he'll be in rest mode when I throw the bean he will get access to his um go tanks draw ability but that's okay because he won't be able to generate a uh, free rest and do something with Brogamo because my card is already in rest mode and there's nothing for him to rest so that puts me in a very good spot I'm gonna go ahead and uh defend he also is going to attack and he knows that I have access to blocking, which is why he attacked with the leader first, because he knows that he needs his draw. He dropped a lot of cards last turn. He needs to replenish his hand. And if I can block and activate Zamasu, I can definitely block the ape, combo with the Zamasu, and rest his leader. And he did not want that. But I got a perfect block, and I'm able to restand my Goku and hit. So at this point, Goku and hit is dispensable. I still don't want to give him cards. I'm glad he didn't combo because I did not want to use Bean yet while he has four energy open. I just don't want to give him cards, access to more routes of administration to how he plans on proceeding with the match. So he goes ahead and uh, attacks with the Bardock, which should have been the play, but he doesn't attack with the Bardock. 
He instead uses Goku 8. Now, I think that that was sequenced just a little bit incorrectly. And it's not, it's not, it has nothing to do with everything that he's been doing was absolutely phenomenal in the fact that he's just been playing with what the cards that he's been dealt with. But you want to attack with your cards before you use your energy. You want to keep your opponent guessing. You want to keep your opponent, you want to make your opponent be afraid and use that negate. You want to have them use that block. You know, you don't want them to see everything at face value just yet. So by tapping out, this showed me that the only threat that he can place on board at this point is a, uh, in a, um, a, a overrun card, which would most likely be uh, the Mass Saiyan uh, Secret Identity. So that's the only card I gotta look out for. That's the only card I gotta plan around for. Everything is in front of me, it's in front of my face. He's giving me enough information to choose how I want to proceed with the match. And so that's, you know, that's the only thing that I say about sequencing. Is about just not giving me so much information. You know, the second you tap out, I know, hey, you can't drop Gotenks. I don't got to play around it. You can't drop Mechagabora. I don't got to play around it. You can't drop this other card that I don't know about or even Bezu. I don't have to play around it. And so that's just, you know, you want to make sure that you're just not giving your opponent that much information. And by tapping out, you're giving them a lot of information on how you plan to proceed with your turn. Um, so at this point, you know, he does have a unison. He has a uh, Putin and he has an eight. That's pretty decent. He's he's defended. He's a 20k right now on the defense. He attacks with the eight. And at this point, I think it's I don't want to block. And the reason why I don't want to block is because um, you know, I'm playing around secret identity. And obviously, I don't know whether or not he has it, but I just have to have that in the back of my mind. I don't want to be raceful. If I block, I'm gonna force to defend. And once I block, I turn, I, I, I'm rested for good, which makes my Goku hit vulnerable. And then he can secret identity, remove my perfect six on the board and swing it to my Goku hit. And that would wipe my entire board. I do not want that play. So I chose not to block. Um, and at this point now he attacks with his um, unison and I'm pondering on what I should do. Um, and I think at this point, I will choose not to block again for that specific reason. Because if he does drop the secret identity, he wants to get rid of Goku and Hit. I know that. I don't want him to get value off of swinging into it because that's just too free. No. You're going to have to choose Goku and Hit because I have two Vanillas on board that fit you perfectly. But Goku and Hit is just negative debt to you, towards you regardless. So... Obviously, I allow him to kill that, and at this point, if he secret identities, he's going to get rid of the Goku hit. At least I may be able to defend my um, Android with the free Han. That was my, my reasoning, but he doesn't actually have secret identity. He doesn't use that, that this turn, so I'm safe, but I did prepare myself in the worst case scenario, um, and it wasn't so much playing around that I had to do. I didn't have to waste cards or anything. So it wasn't like, you know, I compensated heavily for playing worst case scenario, even though there are situations where people do that. Um, this particular situation, I'm going to swing into the unison. I want to get the draw and um, I just want to see what my options are first. So now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and take out his unison. I have to because I don't want to swing into his leader, even though it's profitable. Um, I got to make sure that I get that 5k off and that I take out his ability to use Vegeta counterplay and that I can avoid the combo step at this point. So I get to avoid the combo step because, again, that's just how you have to approach the matchup with yellow. And then I go ahead and wipe out the unison. Now I have a 20k beater that can attack. Even if he does have Zamasu, I have no other battle cards on board just yet, so I'm good. And I can play a battle card without fear of being counterplayed. So that's the sequencing is extremely important in especially matchups where you're playing against blue or yellow and they have access to Zamasu Super Combo. Now I'm dropping this six drop bad boy and this is going to be the Vegeta. He looks at the top four and he can place up to any mono blue cards into your hand. He can place any number of the rest of those mono blue cards into your energy area in active mode. And then the rest of the cards that are not mono, he can place into the bottom of the deck. I kind of did not unleash the full power of this card when I dropped it because of the fact that I had an ape 
and I had a Zamasu Super Combo on top of the deck. And those were good cards, you know? But, um, yeah, you know, I was still able to generate the other two energy. I went up to eight. This game is going to be over next turn because I have access to my um, Android 17 Protector of the Wildlife, I believe. Or what have you, the seven drop, which essentially is going to dump his hand out. And it's just going to be that. So at this point, I have D-Magics. I believe I have two D-Magics in my hand. I'm going to use the ape. I'm going to be able to have access to three blockers and D-Magic next turn and have access to my Trunks, God Seal, and Technique. I'm in a pretty good spot. Um, and I think the video is going to kind of, I think that we had to go to our round three match. Um, so I believe that the video cut short here, but essentially the point that I want to really bring in is that, um, you know, testing so far with Vegeta has been fun. It's been forthcoming. Um, and that's that, you know, so far the deck, this is the, this is the pilot. This is the, 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 you know, episode one of Vegeta. And I'm really going to try hard to make it a very, very viable deck. Um, so hopefully you guys are enjoying the showcase so far. He goes ahead and attacks with his leader. Um, and at this point, I'm just not going to give him room to rest my card. So I get a free block and I'll be able to restand Goku and hit, which would give me another block. And I have access to 2D magics as well as the counterplay. He only has access to three energy, so this game is going to just go south. Um, I think we end up scooping it up because we were called for that. But again, I want to give a shout out to Sean again. Secret Identity. So he had the card. Did have the Secret Identity, which was good. And he's going to give it away my blocker because he's thinking like, hey, you know, the blocker, Goku hit is great, but I'm only going to be able to get rid of one card. And the blocker is just not doing it for me. That 30k blocker is going to be able to attack pressure my leader i'm at two life and then he's going to be able to restand he's so much better than goku hit at this point you know um and i think we just scoop it up at this point we just scoop it up uh because you know there's there's nothing else you know we have to head out but again guys i just wanted to finish off the video by saying that you know hopefully you've got to get a pretty decent idea of what vegeta can do so far again the hill twins are always going to endeavor to give you guys Real life content, in real life content. Um, and, um, you know, I want to thank Sean for the video, guys. Uh, you can follow or check him out at the Comic Book Pals. Um, um, he does a podcast web series. Um, and I will we'll place that link down in the description as well. Um, he's been an avid friend helping us create content and stuff. So, definitely fantastic. Again, guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. I have so much more that I'm willing to bring to you guys for Set 11 as well. And uh, just continue to bear with us. If you haven't done so, make sure that you comment, you like, you subscribe. Um, and, you know, let's, let's make this game not only the best game, um, but let's help grow this channel as big as possible. Because as, you, as long as you guys support us, we will always never nonstop endeavor to bring you guys high quality competitive content. Thank you guys again. And as always, stay super, baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right.